Hello. Quick video on connected bodies. Actually, it's going to be quite long because I've got three examples to show you and the principle of Newton's laws. So here I have three examples in front of me of bodies that are connected. They're quite often connected by uh, ropes or strings. Um, but occasionally they have rods between them and the important thing is we need to be able to find the connecting forces um, to do all our calculations and we do that using Newton's third law. So let's have a look at it. Here I've got two bodies and the important thing is these are separate bodies A and B and here they're connected by a rope between them. And principle here is that this rope has a tension in it in this case and if body A is e exerting a force on body B, i.e. that force there, pulling body B to the left, then uh, that's the tension, yep, yeah, that body B is exerting an equal force on body A, but in the opposite direction. So that's that one there, yeah. So body B is pulling body A in the direction to the right, yeah. That's quite important. And if you think about that, we see these pairs of forces all over the place. If you lean on a wall with your arm, then effectively the wall's pushing you back. And if you're stood on the floor, you don't fall through the floor. The floor is pushing up on your bottoms of your feet to stop you going through. So they, all these forces appear in pairs, yeah, equal and opposite pairs. So let's have a look at this example above. I've got a trailer A. And I've got our uh, being pulled by a truck B, and the truck B is going to pull us in this direction, yeah. So there's going to be a tension between and the rope that's between them. So when B starts moving to the right, A starts moving to the right, yeah, by the same same velocity, same speed, yeah. Now, in order to do this, we have to have a few simplifications for, around this famous rope or string. So the first thing is that it's light the rope or string and therefore it has no weight in itself so we don't need to do any force equals mass times acceleration on that um, it's not got any weight it's not going to sag or anything like that on its own weight second thing is it's inextensible so it doesn't stretch the important thing there is therefore the body a is moving at the same speed as body b same velocity same acceleration yeah um, otherwise they wouldn't be moving at the same uh, rate OK, so let's extend the example we've got in front of us. So I've got my uh, trailer at A being pulled along by the rope here, which has got a tension B in it. So a tension T in it by body B, which is so let's assume that our, our uh, B, which is our truck, wasn't it, has got a motive force P. What do I mean by motive force? A force that's trying to create a motion. So that force is trying to drive us forward yeah, in that direction and we're going to drag in effect our truck um, B, sorry our trailer A, sorry along with it yeah and let's assume there's some sort of frictional resistive force F. Now next thing I want to do for this overall package of, of forces and bodies is I'm going to create force diagrams separately for each body. So if I look at uh, body A, the trailer, it's being pulled along only by the external force, the tension in the rope. That's what's pulling it in that direction. So we're going to assume to the right. So we're assuming here's my acceleration double arrow and our acceleration A. That's taking us off to the right. Yeah. And it's being resisted by some sort of frictional force. But there's our force diagram for body A. Now I can do a force diagram for body B. Well, I've got my motive force, my force that's pulling us forward P, and I've got two forces trying to hold us back in effect, the uh, frictional force, but also the tension in the rope, yeah? Effectively on that body, the um, truck is feeling a force pulling it backwards there. And again, we've got exactly the same acceleration because the, the rope, the string between them is inextensible. So whatever's happening to A is happening to B. So if A's got acceleration A, then B's got acceleration A. And so I've now got two separate diagrams. And I can um, apply Newton's second law to each of these bodies. So force equals mass times acceleration. So for body A, I've got the tension in the rope. Off, um, moving us forward, 
and against that I've got to take off the frictional force and that's going to be MA, yeah, for the mass of body A times the acceleration of A. And then I can do exactly the same thing for B, so I've got my force P moving us forward, I've got two forces resisting that, um, T and F, and that's creating the resultant force there, P minus brackets T plus F, is giving us the acceleration um, MB mass B or times A, yeah? So there we have it. I've got two forces, and if you think about it, they're like simultaneous equations now. So two equations, two simultaneous, two, two equations for simultaneous. And now, if I just write them one under the other, we can see that on the first equation for um, body A, the tension is positive, but for body B, the tension is negative. So if I just add those two simultaneous equations, I effectively eliminate T and I can find out what my A acceleration is going to be. So on the left hand side I've got my resultant force of P minus 2F. On the right hand side I've got the mass of my two bodies that are summing together and there's my acceleration. So therefore rearranging to make A the subject of this equation and the acceleration is P minus 2F um, over MA plus MB. Now some of you may have noticed effectively what we've got here because we've got the same accelerations in exactly the same directions is we've got a system here where we could have treated the bodies together couldn't we and only our only external forces are the P and the minus 2F and the total mass of our system is MA plus MB. Now that only works if our uh, forces are going in exactly the same direction, our bodies are moving in the same direction. In principle, we could treat it as an overall system. So there we are. And once we've found the acceleration, we can go back and we can substitute back into one of our F equals MA equations, rearranged here to do that, to get tension there, to find the tension. So the tension will equal, the if we substitute in here for our acceleration with the equation we calculated earlier, we now know the tension. Yes, the uh, frictional forces, the frictional force on the, uh, that's the, we're using the um, body A here, aren't we? So the tension there is going to be the frictional force of, on body A times the mass times the acceleration we calculated. So there's our first idea. Um, second type of system we'll see is pulleys. You've got a pulley in it. Now, we've talked about the idea that there's a light inextensible string, but there's something interesting about the pulleys, and it's an assumption we have to make to make our system work here. And the assumption is that this is a smooth and light pulley. So what they mean by smooth is here the axis is smooth, so we're not getting any friction there. And the pulley is light, therefore effectively it's not a body with mass that we can, and we don't have to do force equals mass times acceleration type calculations for the pulley. It's like it it doesn't exist, it's got no weight. What's important about that is as follows, that therefore the tension in the rope or string on the left hand side, the pulley is going to be the same as the tension in the uh, rope or pulley on the right hand side. If that pulley wasn't um, smooth and light, we could have a difference in that tension. Um, but as it is, it effectively doesn't exist, and the tension of the string is just going from one side to the other is exactly the same. And that's really important because when we start doing our calculations in a sec, um, we're going to use that concept in that. If we create our force diagrams, the body A, we've got our tension here coming up, haven't we? In body A, that's the tension. Oops, that's the tension in the string um, pulling it up, yeah? And of course, for this bit of string, that's going to be the same as that tension coming down there on the piece of string um, from the body, from the um, around, sorry, around the pulley. And the same thing's happening on this side. And I've got tension here, and I've got tension there coming down the string of the pulley. And these are all going to be the same. And they're all the same here because, in effect, that pulley is smooth and light. Yeah. So, in effect, you can see we've got pairs here. And these two are going to be the same tension because 
it's uh, that tension's paired with that tension, which is the same as that tension there, and it's paired down to there. Um, so that's how it works in a more complicated way, but the reality is, um, as a result of that being smooth and light, in effect, we've got these two tensions are paired, and that's our action and reaction going on in our pairing. We can then go on and do exactly what we did in the last uh, example. We can create two Newton F equals MA equations for the two bodies. Remember, I'm always going to carry those out, um, those calculations in the direction that I think the body's going to move, which way its acceleration is going to be. Now, I've assumed in effect here that the mass and that mass B is heavier than mass A, so that mass B is going to move down and mass A is going to move up. So therefore, my acceleration on the left-hand side is upwards of A, and my acceleration on the right-hand side is downwards of A. Yeah, and they're the same, of course, because the the uh, string is inextensible. So therefore, I'm doing my F equals M A upwards on the left-hand side, F equals M A downwards on the right-hand side, and I create those two so I, those two equations. And again, if I just place those two and treat them as simultaneous, place them one under the other, the first equation for A has a positive T, the equation for B has a negative T. So when I sum those two and I add those two equations, I eliminate T. Then if I factorize both sides and then rearrange, I find this equation here. The A equals MB minus MA in brackets all over MA plus MB all times G. So we can see that our force is primarily a gravity force here now because it's all multiplied by um, multiple of G. Now, let's have a quick look at some other things that are true given that equation. So if MA, MB equals MA, there's going to be no acceleration. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because the the two bodies, this is going to be a statics problem, the two bodies are going to be static, there's going to be no movement. Second thing we can do is find out, the now we know what the acceleration is, we can find out what the tension is by using, uh, in this case, our, uh, I think that's the one for A, the F equals MA equation for the body A, so T minus MA uh, G equals um, MA little a of A. Rearranging that, to get T on its own to be the subject, we can then substitute in our a new expression, our new equation for A into there. And with a bit of tidying up, um, I get this equation down here for T equals 2MA MB times G all over MA plus MB. Now, there we have a, a fairly, it's a nice symmetric equation there in A and B. Um, and of course, if MA equals MB, we can see that the MA MB is just going to become M squared. So I've got 2M squared on the top. And on the bottom, I'd have MA equals MAB. Then I'm going to have 2M on the bottom. With a bit of cancelling, we can see that that would cancel down to, if the bodies are the, s the same mass, that we're going to get um, T equals MG. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because that's. Again, it's the static situation, if those four are the same, that each of these bodies is just going to be static, isn't it? With the force G, MG down and the tension T up. That can happen for my B body, and it's going to happen for my A body on the other side, yeah? So here we have a nice static solution, if they mass is the same. So have a look at my third example. Here I've got pulleys and I've got a rough incline here. So I've got some friction potentially operating there. But every other assumption we made is the same. It's light and inextensible a rate with a smooth light pulley. And the bodies are connected here through this rope. So we're going to have some tensions again in this rope that are going to start the movements. Okay. Creating our force diagrams on the left hand side, I'm interested in the motion up the slope. Let's assume it's going that way. Makes sense, doesn't it, at this point? Because that's a free body on the right, the B. So let's assume that that's accelerating down. Um, that's the way all the motion is going to operate. That's important because it affects where the tension side, which way the friction is going to operate. But let's assume that effectively that body B is going down 
and it's heading down and body A is being pulled up the slope. So again, I can create two Newton equations, Newton's second law equations, there they are for the two bodies A and B. And again, because of these matching pairs, I can treat those as simultaneous. And if I just add them together, my positive T there um, cancels out with my negative T there, and I get this equation there, which I can then rearrange to, to this form here. So again, my acceleration is some function of my G. <clears throat> Excuse me, there we are, and we're on the go again. And again, by substituting back into my F equals MA equation, this time I'm going to do it for the body B, then and with a bit of simple rearrangement to get tension as being of a subject to the equation, I can therefore find um, an equation for T. Um, seems to have got out of place, that should be there, so I've got MA plus MB, here is my total mass, that's what I was dividing by here, again as I did in the last example. So here we've got something that looks very much like our earlier example with the two pulleys and then some multiplier depending on the angle that we're pulling up the slope and the frictional coefficient. So that again, we can find my, our acceleration and tension. So here's my little summary as ever, connected bodies, we've got Newton's first law is our most important point here, isn't it, that the force that body A exerts on body B, then body B will be an exerting an equal and opposite force, I opposite in the other direction. And in the sort of examples we're using, to make this all work simply, we're going to have light in so extensible strings, and smooth light pulleys. There you go. Hope that's of you.